Hi, I'm Mary Kopsinski, the CEO of Regolytics. Welcome to this week's Regulatory Roundup. This week, there were 1,957 alerts from 356 unique U.S. regulators. 368 had to do with coronavirus. The regulator of the week is Virginia. As you know, Virginia is for lovers. And in this week's good regulatory news, Virginia did just that. They issued a ton of new rules this week, including better water standards for swimming pools. They updated ethical rules for nurses when it comes to conversion therapy for people doing a gender transition. This may or may not be loving, depending upon your views. The Board of Optometry is only allowed to issue opioid prescriptions electronically. And finally, a big announcement from the Virginia State Corporation Commission, Bureau of Financial Institutions, which is that despite hundreds of COVID-related investment scams nationwide, Virginia has fortunately experienced almost none. At first I thought, wow, cool. But then the article points out that NASA and other states have busted over 200 COVID investor scams, whereas Virginia only has one open case. I hope this doesn't mean that Virginia is so loving that they love scammers, to be determined. The topic of the week is interagency drama. There is a lot going on in the world, and with clashing protesters and federal versus state power disputes, it's not a surprise that regulator to regulator hostility is on the rise. The Conference of State Bank Supervisors president published an op-ed in American Baker speaking out against the OCC, saying it oversteps its reach by calling anything that touches money a bank. He argues that the OCC, which is a part of Treasury, is flouting the congressional limits on its authority and it needs to be stopped. New York is always pushing up against the current administration, including suits against the federal government for issues like immigration, climate rollbacks, and investor protections. But it got even more personal this week as the attorney general opened up a case into Trump's personal finances. Given the rise of political unrest, the National Governors Association published a guide to help governors balance the need to create space for public discourse as well as to protect people from the spread of COVID-19. The SEC had a monster of a week between issuing a major update to the definition of accredited investor, updating the disclosure rules, as well as minor things like, oh, issuing a new interagency announcement on rules for orderly liquidation, and a COVID-inspired temporary rollback of certain reg show rules. Anyway, while some welcomed the SEC changes, others did not love them. Regarding the accredited investor changes, the Senate Committee on Banking, Housing, and Urban Affairs, which normally hates rollbacks of financial safety regulation, gave a very positive statement saying it was a welcome modernization that allows certain well-trained people to invest instead of exclusively the rich. However, the North American Securities Administration, NASA, was not a huge fan, saying the SEC was continuing to deregulate private markets with little regard for the public markets, which are shrinking. Regarding the disclosure changes, feedback was mostly positive, though some of the commissioners, including my hero, Hester Pierce, were disappointed that it didn't provide enough disclosures around things that kind of the whole world cares about, like... I don't know, climate change, diversity, and those items are definitely starting to have big impacts on the bottom line for companies so they can continue to keep their investors in the dark on these issues. And finally, the FHA has issued the extension of its moratorium on evictions to the end of the year, which the Senate Committee on Banking, Housing, and Urban Affairs was happy about, but still didn't feel like it was enough of a federal response. For those of you following cannabis, vaping, etc., the SEC busted Weed Club for failing to file its financial reports. The Florida Department of Health issued a series of emergency rules about cannabis. One covers packaging and labeling for medical marijuana and low THC cannabis products. The other describes rules around edibles, including the shapes and forms of permissible edibles prohibited ingredients, and sanitation requirements. 
For those of you following climate change, the FCC is proposing rules about space debris. Freddie Mac issued a report on how doing green home improvements not only helps save you money in utilities and reduce pollution, but it actually can now officially increase your home value. Ice Clearing US is extending incentives related to three futures and options contracts having to do with the environment. For those of you following crypto, a company called Evergreen ATM that is doing business as GetCoins applied to Florida for a declaratory statement about whether its business model is considered a part of the Florida money transmitter statute. The SEC is looking into American Blockchain Biochar Corporation since it failed to report its financials. The SEC also busted a Ponzi scheme targeting African immigrants. This group raised $27 million that was supposed to be invested in FX and crypto trading with promises of risk-free returns. Of course, they spent it on themselves and their previous investors. The National Science Foundation is having a meeting of the Advisory Committee for Cyber Infrastructure on September 22nd. And the White House announced it is investing $1 billion in artificial intelligence, quantum information science, 5G communications, and other emerging tech. In other federal news, a number of agencies are collecting, synthesizing, and digesting information about the impact of coronavirus on the economy. From the Department of Agriculture to the CFPB to the Fed, there are lots of new studies out there. Too many, honestly, for me to get into here, but I will say that the committee within the Federal Reserve that is responsible for monetary policy just went through the first ever public review of the monetary policy framework. The CFPB is proposing a new category of qualified mortgages called seasoned QMs. The IRS has approved a temporary use of e-signatures for certain forms. The SBA has updated the public with its process for PPP appeals. In our fine tracker this week, the Nebraska Department of Banking and Finance has recently received an increased volume of complaints related to investments in precious metals. The North American Securities Administrators Association, NASA, adopted a model act for whistleblowers. And since we're on whistleblowers, the SEC is having an open meeting today about revamping their whistleblower framework. The Alabama Securities Commission busted Corona Millionaire and Corona Billionaire, two websites that claim to have a semi-automated trading platform that will beat the market by 0.01 seconds. The Alabama Securities Commission also busted an internet trading company claiming a 34,000% profit. They tried to persuade investors on social media to put in their government COVID payment and pool it into a church fund. Speaking of church, the CFTC also busted three people for defrauding churchgoers in Maryland. It was a Ponzi scheme that claimed the money would be spent on Forex and Bitcoin. The FDIC also busted yet another PPP scammer. And New York busted Michael T. Mann for laundering over $1 billion in stolen funds by diverting payroll fees. For those of you following the LIBOR transition, ARC released updated fallback language for bilateral business loans. The CFTC issued a bunch of no action letters for swap dealers, giving them relief related to the LIBOR transition. And for those of you following data privacy, the FTC is having a big workshop on data portability on September 22nd. That's it this week for Regalytics US Alerts. Join us every Wednesday morning on LinkedIn. And for the longer version, see us on YouTube.